My name is Dave Tipper. This is my reflective presentation for my MA in photography. So early practice. So I've taken a very natural journey from a photography student uh, to subject leader for photography at Barton Peverell College. And these images will express some of that experience. So back in 2002, uh, during a time of feeling of disconnection between the landscape, so I was living in the city at the time, this image came at a time when I really needed it the most. So reconnecting me with the land, you know, experience the magic of landscape. Then in 2003, this image here, which I called Fire Child, uh, again, it sparked something deep within me, that, that feeling of uh, photography being able to express something beyond the surface of the image. So in this particular image, I could feel uh, the warmth of the fire and the gaze of the mother and the sound of the drum. Uh, I moved into experimentation with lots of different things. So as a photography technician, so pinhole photography, uh, plant shadows, so this is working in a similar way to Faye Goblin's glass work series. Uh, darkroom watergrams, so light sensitive paper working with uh, water droplets to capture uh, you know, these moments in time. Uh, darkroom double exposures, but all nature inspired, as you can see. And the Ilford black and white printing competition. So this is a point that I suddenly felt that deep love and inspiration for natural landscapes. So landscape photography, so just through a little journey now. So most of what little I have learned about British history, I've learned through the soles of my feet. So Godwin's words here really you know, say something about my initial practice. So just walking through landscapes and learning from those experiences. Um, she showed me the relationship between humans and nature um, and also that link between landscape, posture and literature. So this is something I'd like to explore in my practice. I also enjoyed her uh, dislike for the picturesque, which she expressed in this video here. Uh, so I'm trying to move away from that picturesque as well. So medium format photography, I did a lot of this. So lots of square format imagery here. Um, so working with uh, black and white and dark green based stuff. And some landscapes like Old Winchester Hill were deeply inspirational to me. But it's an ancient farm as well. So really wonderful place. And I intend on going back here. So again, exploring kind of historical sites and landscapes. Uh, walking ancient tracks and pathways, walking through deep forests, uh, exploring sacred sites like West Kennet Long Barrow, and more recently in search of the CERN Abbas giant. And there's something about the absence of that giant which I find uh, quite inspiring. And Dirtle Door, so a very picturesque place, um, and trying to work with it in a way which expresses something deeper. So the layers of time here in the landscape that others might not see. Uh, the Avery Stone Circle, so an incredible site to which I intend on returning to. So the MA modules to date, um, some significant moments. So the first step in module one was to open myself up to that point of departure. So uh, looking for answers in my homeland. So this image here was taken in India. So that inspiration of you know, returning back to my land and looking for my sense of ancestry. And in methods of meaning, looking at the sterilization of landscapes and how I want to kind of move away from that. So that color uh, imagery there into more kind of poetic black, black and white. And reading photographs, I uh, returned to Bart and actually his, uh, his thoughts around the symbolism within, within images and actually the power of image, uh, text and sounds. So in module five, interdisciplinary practice, uh, really interested in, uh, in sound. So Alex Metcalf was actually quite inspiring for me because I, I met him and we started to listen to the sound of trees, which is quite cool. So contextual influences during the webinar, the Grain Project came up um, and that was quite interesting to find out how actually people work in context. Um, and uh, ideas of deep time, so knowing that there are layers of time and we can look back deeply in time if we can learn to see beyond the surface of the image. And I started to research into ancient trackways. I'm really interested in exploring uh, the land and maybe walking some of those trackways of our ancestors. And native tribes, this is a bit of a sideline really, but I think it was really helpful to understand you know, where we've come from. And I think this could inform some of my later practice. I've started using a Google map here uh, to plot the ancient sites and I've started to see patterns. So planning the routes that I'm going to take. And my contextual influences, there's a few here. So Ellie Davies um, has been interesting for the psychological expression of landscape and our relationship with it. So low lighting, a very distinctive style. And Ellie Dayan, so no man's land, uneasy landscapes. So that idea of using kind of um, slightly uh, interesting compositions or things that kind of stimulate the way we kind of think about the landscape. Hamish Fulton, of course, a very uh, important artist to practice. So a walking artist, and like, focus on experience over art itself. Um, so there's a few quotes here. So my work is about the experience of walking. It is about the state of mind. The texts do not attempt to be complete descriptions that only give a few selected points. Place, time, distance, 
My intention is that the viewers use their own imagination to fill the rest of the story the way they think it might have been. So I find this quite inspiring. Inspiring. So this idea of walking through landscapes and actually getting that kind of stimulation in the viewer's mind to think a bit deeper. Uh, Paul Gaffney's work has helped this as well. So investigating how we uh, represent the landscape um, and actually how we can get people to understand that they have a relationship with the landscape and they actually have a relationship with the formation of pathways themselves. And recently, Rob McFarlane posted this on Instagram. Um, so this beautiful image here, and I was like, wow, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that picturesque? <laughs> uh, and then when you read the text, you realize that actually there are many deeper layers to this. Um, so it acted as kind of a punctum, if you like, the text uh, stimulating my thinking around this. So a quick quote from Gaffney. I find that if you give away too much information, you can close down the viewer's interpretation of the work. And if you give less information, there's a greater chance that the person will bring their own experience to the reading of the work. So I think this is really important because there's got to be a fine balance between image and text. So not to give away too much and not too little. Uh, Mick Yates, uh, an ex uh, MA photography student, I think uh, did quite well here. So that, that balance between text and imagery, again, the text acting as a punctum to make us look a bit deeper. So in summary, uh, so we live in a time of disconnection between humans and nature. Uh, we've very much lost our way in that sense. And my aim is to open a dialogue which explores our connection to the natural world in the hope that we may rekindle and heal this relationship. And my work asks that we listen to the land and her stories, that we see beyond the veil of the everyday and look with earth and eyes. It is concerned with time and the search for meaning in this beautiful but transient life. So walking the pathways of old, I seek feeling and connection to the land. I search for traces, tracks and trails left by our ancestors, a hunter of memory and myth. And in my methodology, so following ancient trackways and visiting sacred sites, I seek to immerse myself in landscape and work closely with the people who express its story. So it'd be a combination of image, text and sound. And I've been gathering an audio library of field recordings and stories and, and musings on the, my experiences. So it'd be digital photography and exploring black and white, but maybe uh, color to see how this uh, evolves. And uh, potentially shooting at different times of day for visual effect. Uh, looking for a consistent editing style, which is both timeless, atmospheric and has a feeling of mystery and, and memory. The purpose and context really is to create that bridge between the viewers and the land to connect with a wider audience, but people those who are interested in a deeper ecology of being and also expressing my own connection with the land itself. So thank you for listening. I hope that gives you an insight into my practice and I look forward to seeing how it unfolds over time.